Hey everybody, uh, I'm Jamin Warren. I'm the founder of Kill Screen. Um, Kill Screen is an arts and culture organization advancing the practice of interdisciplinary play. Uh, we were founded back in 2010 and we're trying to drive the intersection of design, culture and impact uh, through collaboration, ultimately show the world why play matters. So we're always looking to break down barriers, particularly between disciplines that have been uh, have been segregated for quite some time and ultimately foster a diverse community of creators, uh, folks like Rachel, um, to have an ambassadorial relationship with games and play in the world around us. Uh, so some housekeeping notes um, for Zoom, you can click on hide non-video participants. There are some other members of the Kill Screen team um, who are here in attendance with us. Um, so if you see uh, Camille or Emma, you can just uh, simply hide them or leave them at the top of your screen. Um, we'll be recording this and we're going to be posting it later. Um, there is Q&A, so feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. I'll do my best to field the questions um, as, uh, as we go. If not, we'll wait until the end. Uh, we'll go for about 45 minutes and then we'll break for questions. Um, if you have any technical issues, um, please let us know. You can also use the, uh, the Q&A button for that as well. Uh, and you can follow us on Twitter uh, at Killscreen or on Instagram at killscreen.com. All right, so without further ado, um, we have uh, the pleasure of having Rachel Rossum with us today. Um, she's both a painter and visual artist. Um, in one of her pieces, she's explored what's lost in translation between physical and virtual spaces, uh, scanning bits of her paintings and photos she's taken in her studio and apartment and making them into a, a short video experienced through Oculus Rift and hung in a gallery with her work. We'll be talking about that piece. Um, she's shown in solo exhibitions in New York and in museums uh, in Basel, Istanbul, and Helsinki. She's also a fellow at New Inc, founded by the New Museum uh, in New York City. Uh, for research, she might hack action adventure video games like uh, GTA or Call of Duty to better understand how big budget special effects are executed, um, but also by working uh, traditional art making techniques and practices with new technologies. She examines the boundaries between the hyper real and imaginary, between perceptual and embodied space um, to distill some of the larger themes around human experience. All right, so welcome, Rachel. Thank you for Hi. joining us today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Thanks for having well, me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think to get started, I'd love to hear about how you got started. Um, you know, as a as a creator and uh, as a, as an artist, we have a photo from your your book, um, which you were pleasant enough to share with us. Okay, are you sharing it on the screen? Oh yeah, I do have to actually share it with you. If you share it with the screen. <laughs> so I was like, where? <laughs> yeah, just in your oh, just it? in your just in. Yeah, your I know mind. which one. I think yeah, yeah, yeah in my mind. Well, right. There it is. Oh, yikes. That's, <laughs> that's great. That's just um, yeah, great. so how did you get started uh, in art making, art making practice? I, um, I started programming, I started using op, uh, command line when I was very young, um, when I was six, and then I uh, started use programming, doing light programming when I was eight. Um, but my first experiments um, using technology digital technology were on a dot matrix printer and i was just making ascii drawings and then drawing on top of them so uh, i started working with hardware and software uh, at a pretty young age and that space became which is still something that i mine or you know in my work uh I, this is something i still mine in my work is this uh the way that that virtual space became very therapeutic. You know, I, I grew up in a pretty intense environment um, for a bunch of different reasons, but, um, and that became a way to, yeah, find, find the rest of the world outside of the place that I grew up in, um, find like safe escape safe levels of escapism and then it would sometimes mm. border in, into on un unhealthy levels of escapism which i think is pretty relevant to like what kill screen's talking about right it's like the ways that we engage with um virtual realities you know um so yeah that's i don't know started young and it still feels like my mother tongue yeah 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 i mean at the age of eight like um like what types of things were you doing with technology and it's also probably helpful for any any parents out there who are <laughs> yeah, looking think, to see like, yeah, where, where that, where that interest might go someday. I think it's, we, uh, um, there's this kind of like the way that we, 
yeah, how to approach this. It's like the way that we interact with technology today is we kind of have this infinite regress approach of black boxes, like for the most part, like most people don't understand how these infrastructures work. And what right. starting that young helped me understand is that the the back end was like, because I started at hardware that then moved to command line, which is like, for the most part, that's, you know, one turtle back, you know, and then like the hardware is like a few more turtles back, right? So, um, <laughs> and I think tinkering on that level, like, cause so I, because I was introduced to command line, which is the back end of a, of a, of a operating system, like a graphic, you know, a GUI. And so then I was able to open up EXEs, which were um, re easy to unzip. And so I just started um, opening them up and experimenting with them, swapping textures and that kind of thing, like opening up video games. And yeah. then from there I could start, you know, I learned HTML of course, when I was like super, super young, which was, um, and then that moved into like operate, <laughs> action op, like, like object oriented programming. Um, and that's like, once you kind of get object oriented programming, that's pretty like, you kind of start figuring out anything. Yeah. What, uh, what video games were you taking apart? Um, let's see back then it would have been whatever was, yeah. I mean, I, I, I say, yeah, it would have been whatever was on when I was older. It was, it was like first person shooter games, like right. counter-strike or, um, I don't think I ever took apart Mist, but I feel like that's impossible because of how much I played it. <laughs> but there are things that I kind of had careless disregard for, like I could break them and knew that nobody would miss them. Like I remember breaking Minesweeper, but I can't, I don't think I switched any of the textures out or it, like some things I would just, that would just be broken. Ski Free, I messed with a lot, but I always couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to um, manipulate it. These are, these are, these are all um, uh, video games that came loaded onto Windows 95. The, the, I remember being able to really dig deeply into the um, screensavers, which was really fascinating. Like being yeah. able to swap that stuff out. So basically it's just like doing really lazy modding. I didn't know what I was doing. I just was, you know, just doing that. Yeah. And then, yeah. So I don't yeah. know if like, yeah, the programming more is like comes into when I just got to like move things around and like kind of look at the code. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, do you think there's something special about Windows 95 as a, I don't know, I mean, just n now knowing what you know, um, like about programming, I mean, do you feel like that was a, a jumping off point for, you know, other artists maybe who are looking to kind of tinker, uh, you know, at roughly around the same time? Um, I just, no, I don't, I mean, maybe this is a stupid response, but I think it was just that it was open, you know, I don't think yeah. there was anything special. It was just that that built on that, um, you know, like, like Linux based architectures, it's a little, it's more closed. And I, I think for like someone who is eight years old, it was just more open and just, a, it's more porous, yeah. which is still true, true today. Like, you know, so um, I could really break things and that yeah. was helpful. Yeah. I mean, know? it's interesting. It sounds like you also were doing this in a context, like you weren't um, around other people who were doing the same thing. Is that right? It sounds like it was pretty self-directed or. Oh um, yeah. No, there yeah. was no, yeah, there was it, no, my, my family that we like, so, the, and the reason that I, it was even possible to do this is because my great grandfather who um, was, he's a, uh, I don't know, a German immigrant, but he just in a high school dropout. He was a mechanic, like a mechanic who was like missing fingers from working in Burroughs adding machines, which were like typewriters that then turned into those like larger computers that were all vacuum based. And then when binary was switched, yeah, exactly. I love the exactly hilarious. <laughs> and so then the, when the computers were like the sizes of, um, I didn't know this until like a few years ago. And I was like, that's where those computers came from. It's like the, and they were just discarded, you know, once he passed away and they didn't really know what to do with all this hardware, just kind of sitting there um, from when he had a job as a mechanic, you know, he just would uh, go work on these machines. And then it turned into IBM um, towards the end of his life. Yeah. And uh, Burroughs Adding Machines was, was bought by IBM, which is, you know. Yeah, my uh, my father worked at IBM, so on the sales side. So that was, he brought a PC home for us. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, do you, out of curiosity, do you, do you, does your family still own any of these Burroughs Adding Machines? Oh, or I wish, no. It was, all, it was never a full machines. The dot matrix, I think, came intact. And then however, we had the Windows 95 machine. 
but it was just all pieces of stuff. So I was making like dumb, like I was like kind of like Sid from Toy Story, like putting <laughs> computer parts together and like pro- probably something like tackling at them. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So those were the like, they're just parts that were around, you know, and um, yeah. So yeah, I, no, that, I wish that makes sense. But, yeah. <laughs>